There's one good thing about Trump running for president, and that's that it's cluing more people in as to what kind of fiasco the whole president thing is to begin with. People sort of idolize presidential figures. They make them bigger than life. Some of this is the way that presidents are presented. People still buy into a lot of the shit that media puts out, that standard media, mainstream media puts out, and the way that it gets put out, the way that it gets talked about. And so, like, during the beginning of the Trump uh, campaign, he was asked what uh, things that he supports, and a lot of his answers were basically, well, I'm going to hire the people who will know the best answers to those things. Well, after he started answering questions that way, he started to answer them in the most provocative way possible. That became his thing. I don't think he actually has any positions, just like Hillary. Before he ran as a Republican, he had talked about, he had previously kind of considered himself a Democrat and might have uh, run as a Democrat at some other point in his, his life, but it just seemed easier to pull the wool over uh, right-wingers than the left-wingers. And, and he regularly makes fun of the people who follow him. It's like, hey, you idiots, thanks for your votes. <laughs> he insults them regularly. They can't see it. Um, a lot of what's important in, in a president's job is to be able to just sort of pacify the people, to be able to to somehow connect with the people and give some sort of speech that makes them feel good. So having those sorts of oratory skills, even if, even if right now what's popular is let's be blunt, and right now that would be the Republican Party. He's playing these people like a fiddle. But that's essentially what all of our presidents do. That's what they all do. They're more of a figurehead than what so many people view as what a president is. Presidents obviously have a lot of power, but the main power is in the people that they hire. That's where most of the power is. Now, they wouldn't have those particular people wouldn't have been hired had it not have been for the person who's president. Trump looks at the presidency like it's you know, look, this is the biggest business opportunity ever. He could be the CEO of the biggest business in the world. The scary thing about his... Uh, well, will this business be one of my... Su a success, or will it be like so many of my other businesses, and it'll just it, it have to file for bankruptcy? I mean, <laughs> that's the really scary thing about Trump, the idea of Trump being president. So something that I think is happening is that there is an awakening with the public. Bernie Sanders has helped with this too for completely different reasons. Um, he's showing what happens when you do try to actually shove forth the views you really do have and not just a bunch of fluff. That's why I still, you know... It, Bernie Sanders gives me a bit of hope in that area. That maybe there'll be some sort of change within the way that... Well, at the very least, with the way that people view what the government is. You know, what it, it actually is for someone to be president. How the process works. How much of the, the shit that we're fed is just bullshit. You know? Like, petting a dog uh, that gets really excited to see you and you pet its head. Oh, aren't you so cute, you little... You know? 
if Trump becomes president, I'm positive that he'll have some sort of speechwriter that will write speeches that will match his mode of speech. And the people of now, the people of this era, will eat up his speeches like uh, Republicans ate up the speeches of Ronald Reagan. And, you know, a lot of people, I won't just say just Republicans, a lot of Democrats did too. Um, Ronald Reagan was was good at orating uh, speeches. Obama is really good at orating on the fly all these phrases and things that sound very uh, presidently presidential presidently <laughs> dently do right presidently do right another thing would be the knowledge that we're becoming more and more aware of is how a lot of the these differences that we see between Republicans and Democrats that are on the front end, the, the figurehead kind of mentality, the same reason why the presidents will, you know, basically pat the public on the head, oh, aren't you so cute, do boo boo do do boo but done in a way that, you know, obviously isn't like that, but that's, that's what it's the equivalent to doing to the people. And uh, then when the people get when the people get angry at something, it's it's the the president will say it'll be the equivalent of, "Well, bless your heart," and that's not a phrase you want to hear. You don't want to hear "Well, bless your heart" because you know that's not uh, what it really means. Anyway, now that more people are seeing this game, they're starting to get clued in that the Democrats and Republicans are more close to each other than we think on the way that they actually work together. This isn't to say that they're the same. They definitely have differences, but they use the public differently from each other. They have different methods that they use the public with, but they both use the public. They manipulate the public. It's, it's mostly about power. Power and perks. I think the primary area where politicians actually care or sort of have to care about issues are more local government. State, county, city. On that kind of level. Heck, though, even when you get to state, it starts to get pretty... Uh, more of a... a well, I can make some money, put on the happy face, and, you know, there, there is so much wool being pulled over people's eyes, and we just, you know, before we had television media, before we had television, um, and before we had radio shows, those who got political at all knew at least a little bit more about about the system and people couldn't people who were being elected um, weren't having to put on as much of a show they could just state their opinions but now it's just everything's this big this big larger than life sort of thing And nobody seems really interested in putting a cap on that whole thing. Um, I mean, yeah, it would make it would make politics uh, slightly boring, but at least it would be honest in some way. Where you know, where okay, media would be would have regulations put on it. where let's say during a campaign they they have to cover every person equally and just state their platform and they can't do any other stories other than this equal time that they give every every a person 
That's all they can do when it comes to elections. No more of this propaganda that costs millions and millions and millions and millions. Look how much money it goes into these presidential campaigns. Look how much ridiculous amount of money goes into that. And look how they get covered by media. Pay media enough and they'll cover things as long as you want them to, right? And again, the other side to media is, you know, if it's not that, if it's not what I just said, then it's media just as long as they can keep people interested and keep them into the, that mindset that people normally have, then it will be just like any other programming on TV that the, the that there's something in the programming, something in the message that makes it so we will be satisfied with the status quo and that we will continue to buy the products that are advertised during the commercial time slots and so on. The internet threw a huge wrench in this whole thing. Now there's not the type of control that media had before and people are starting to wake up. At the same time, there's a lot of disinformation, misinformation being pushed out there as well. And now people are able to uh, easily talk with others uh, in chat, in text, in many, many different ways and see and all these memes out there and people can see that they're not alone in the way that they think about something. We also weren't ready for the internet. Media props up all these very emotional issues. Whether it's right-wingers on places like Fox News, uh, whether it's MSNBC, let's just prop up all these emotional issues. And then when we get emotional, it makes us feel like uh, we know something more and we're, we're more connected with what's really going on but most people don't know shit. And that's what people like Trump are running on. I was just thinking about how I, I can't count how many ridiculous, stupid, uninformed, ignorant memes float all over the place on social media. Just completely ignorant. Uh, lots of misquotes. And all of this stuff I'm talking about where some, a lot of people are waking up to this stuff not a huge percentage of people, but there are there is a percentage of people who are waking up to this stuff. And we can thank the openness of <coughs> the openness of the internet. <clears throat> we can thank the openness of the internet for waking people up. 